When I was a kid, I wanted to be an astronaut. I was really into NASA, the Gemini missions, the space shuttle, Skylab, all that. What's not to like? If you're on the space station, get the best ocean run property imaginable, really good ice cream, and the ability to meet aliens. I was super stoked on space until I saw the Columbia space shuttle blow up in 03. The first thing I did was look at my mom and say, I think I want to be in Mission Control instead. Even if my dreams of being an astronaut burnt up on re-entry, I could still watch movies about it. I love Star Wars. A New Hope is my favorite one out of those movies. But where are the black people in it? Where are the black people in the cinematic landmark, The Last Mimsy? Where are the girls at? Better question, where are black people in science fiction at all? Let's investigate. Safety first. Welcome to Spread the Arts' Imagination Division. Sorry things are so crazy in here. We've been rendering things out for the last six months and we haven't gotten all of them done yet. But anyway, this is a place where we can do what everyone creatively. I'm pretty proud of it. Yeah. Hit Bingo. Afrofuturism is a term for putting black culture and identities into science fiction, rather than putting black faces into space. We're talking about how black culture has been in the past and where it can go in the future. Artists such as Octavia Butler, Sun Ra, Outkast, Janelle Monet, Erica Badu, Solange Knowles, and Robert Pruitt all push the idea of black futures forward. All of these artists show the potential of seeing all of us outside of the bounds of what we were given. I grew up in Boise, Idaho, and I was adopted. So there wasn't a lot of resources for me to figure out my black identity with. Google helped. Going to youtube.com. Going to black Twitter, listening to Missy Elliott watching music videos all help me inform my identity and become the person I am today. Afrofuturism helps us combat the inherent racism within technology. The components that make up our iPhones, our laptops, whatever electronics we use come from stripped minerals from the Congo or other African countries, which leads to giant economic and environmental impacts. But hey, you make the most of it. I've been really into dance videos lately. I really hit the low, like the best of them. But anyway, the way that young people are using their platforms, their Instagrams, their YouTubes to create these dance videos, when somebody hits a crazy dab, dab, the camera shakes. Somebody had to design that. That's called cinematic language or syntax. That's black people using technology in a new way. After futurism, baby. Think about it. Afrofuturism brings up a lot of interesting questions about if spacefaring travel is actually good. Do you think our friends Jeffrey Bezos and Elon Musk are going to take us along on their space adventures? Probably not, unless you want to live on a slave colony. Whitey on the moon type beat. So, so what? Why should you care about Afrofuturism? Well, Afrofuturism is a tool for black people to make what they want to make and be who they want to be. I like working with young people because their artistic minds are completely free. The worlds that they create, the creatures that they were making, completely beyond anything any of us have ever seen before. And I love to encourage that. I use Afrofuturism because it gives me an opportunity to explore myself and put myself in worlds that I haven't seen made. Essentially what I'm trying to say is, 
Afrofuturism is a tool for new freedoms and new ways of expression. Brother Sun Ra said, space is the place, but we can go further and say cyberspace is the new place. Building communities online, seeing art from all different types of people, and using new tools to create digital works. The future is online, baby. It was for me. Anyway, I hope you had a great time watching this episode of Brenda Laugh. We worked really hard on it. As for me, I'm gonna go check out and shred the gnar. I'll see y'all losers later. Picks is a part of our show where we want to hear from you, the Wizards Guild. If you send us some art, we'll add it to our very illustrious gallery that I have behind me. Or if you want to send it to us online, use the hashtag BAWizards on social media and we'll download it and share it in the next episode. Here are some amazing examples of Afrofuturist art that other wizards have been making. Check it out. It's pretty cool. Brenda Lab was made possible by contributions of the NM Bodecker Creative Foundation, the Portland Art Museum, Open Signal, and Wizards Like You. Thank you.